For many years we've talked about wanting to find the source of the River Esk and follow it all the way to the North Sea. Today the talking is over. Join us as we follow this magnificent river from its humble beginnings on the North Yorkshire Moors to the beautiful fishing town of Whitby and the vast and unforgiving North Sea. Hello and welcome to another video. I'm out on another trail but this one is very important because we, and when I say we, I mean me, do, 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 do. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Back again. Joey's back. Tell a friend. Tell this particular adventure has been oh. chatted about many a time. The Esk Valley from source to mouth. There's no paths or anything. And we're looking for the source of the River Esk. <laughs> Thought? Um, I'm excited, man. Like I say, we've talked about it for so long. I mean, People have walked the Nile, people have walked the Amazon. <laughs> really, yeah. the big one they all want. The, yeah. the tick that they all really want to do is esk. The feather, the, <laughs> the pheasant feather in the cap is really yeah. the esk, isn't it? Yeah. This is the, oh, look, you just stopped talking. This is beautiful. It's actually definitely quiet, isn't it? It's definitely quiet. Oh, right, so anyway, we're going to plod on this way and we're looking for the source of the river esk which apparently is called the esklets and is made up of maybe three or four different water sources so we're going to go and try and find the main one and maybe have a drink of it to start our trek lap it like a dog lap it like a dog he says he's back oh it's an egg mad egg these traps are for the things that will have probably have eaten the eggs that we just picked up which are like rats, squirrels, things like that, and it's to stop them eating grouse eggs. But if I can find the footage, I'll put it in, but many years ago, we found one of these traps, and they're quite controversial, and there was a... Owl. Was it a tawny owl? It's an owl that has been trapped from running through there. Just a waste of an amazing creature, that. Could the be. The tributary's running, so if we follow this here, we, are got, we should get to the source up yeah. there. That's gross, mate. Medic! Oh, it's just like a death trap. the death hut. Couldn't get out. Yeah. Couldn't get out, look. Medic! Where is it? Where is it from? Where? Like all of us. The one there. Oh my god, look at them all dead. Hitting here and they can't get out. That's dark. Oh. Oh, he's alive. Oh man. He stinks. Oh, it stinks. We've got to save him. This is dark, isn't it? This is a dark time in our lives, isn't it? They've turned into a soup, haven't they? I'm going in to the spot three of them. Oh, mate, you can't put your hands in that. Why? When are you going to wash your hands in? In the sauce. I've got to save them, mate. Get sick, mate. If you get sick, oh. you're going to jump back in if you put them that way. What? I'd toy them that way. <sighs> They're less likely to fall back in there. Do it once. Go, oh, boys. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that stinks. Lick your fingers. No way. This stinks. <laughs> Oh, what a great start to our amazing journey. We freed three frogs there. So that's good karma, isn't it? I've got to wash these hands up. It's absolutely wrong. Wrong. I think I've just washed them in like dead frog juice. Oh, well. To the sauce. <laughs> good stuff, mate. It's good having a mobile tripod. Isn't it? Thanks. Oh, that was dark, mate. That was dark, wasn't it? Like some sort of horror movie. Yeah. Yeah. We've had a rabbit riddled in just yeah. the death rabbit, and then that. Oh, I mean, I think I'm gonna be, like, it makes me feel like gipping. Yeah, I'm not surprised, mate. Guys, dead soup of frog, not good. So these hides are in the middle of nowhere. For those that don't know, they're used to shoot game birds for posh lads. This is it. The source of the River Esk, which is going to run down here, join the main Esk, and through the Esk Valley. Leading us in maybe two or three days to the harbour and the mouth of the Esk, which is in Whitby, which feeds out into the North Sea. This is exciting times, man. We've seen a lot of death, so... <laughs> so hopefully, from now on, we'll see a lot of life. We've got a lot of positivity to bring, just to counterbalance stuff out. <laughs> Let's get these jackets off. 
do a quick cuddle and then uh, and then we're gonna set off and follow this river all the way to the sea. This is it. This is it, brother. Come on, Joe, do a like do a little ceremonial wipe of the Oh He's ready. I'll do it as well. Cause monkey see, monkey do <laughs> Let's go! The River Esk is a river in North Yorkshire, England that empties out into the North Sea at Whitby after a course of around 28 miles through the Valley of Estdale, named after the river itself. The river's name is derived from the Brythonic word Isca, meaning water. The Esk is the only major river in Yorkshire that flows directly into the North Sea. All of the water courses defined as being major rivers by the Environment Agency either flow to the North Sea via the River Tees or the Humber Estuary. The source of the River Esk is approximately 400 metres above sea level on Westerdale Moor. Here a series of small streams called the Esklets merge. The river then flows through sparsely populated areas of open moorland and farmland to flow into the sea in Whitby. Yeah, you could probably swim in that. Right, here we are. We've just joined this uh, this track, which is used by the hunters to get to their hides. It's quite well established for little buggies. But we've just done some off-roading and foot report. Uh, moist. <laughs> 100% Yorkshire. So Yorkshire. Which is so Yorkshire right now. These, we've been taking way. detours just to see the the water as much as we can because this trip is all about the river and we want to follow it as much as we can and see as much of it as we can yeah. so we're going to go down here off road because we can hear running water and, and do you know what if it's a plunge pool and a waterfall deep enough i'm going in we've got to do it it's not often we have joseph von dyer out and about with us and it's not often we get to fulfill one of our dreams mate whoa i'm going down <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've not seen each other for so long and here we are doing it and it is stunning and I know I say stunning a lot but like sometimes I'm lost for words in fact I'll have to put you away for going down here because I will stack it let's go and there we are back down look at this underneath there's this plunge pool a waterfall and then going off onto another waterfall. New swim shorts. No, but love swim shorts. Available soon. Oh. <laughs> There's a good chance we could have been the first people ever to swim in that. Joe's just seen a robin land over there. So this is truly, truly a magical time. We're not on path, we're just making our own way along the side of this steep valley. One of the escalates that will feed into the esk and this is what we're calling the source. And we're following it, we can hear it. It is just nice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's just beautiful. Right. Farmland, I think we'll have a little map check, my yeah. boy. Before we get shot for trespassing. Look at that, for the gate there. That is beautiful. Action. The craftsmanship. Oh, it's silent. Oh, that's really nice. Really nice. nice. See if it's got a spring on. Let it go. Oh. Oh, you don't get many actually. You do it. not get many. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Idiots. Welcome to Yorkshire. Lovely bit of uh, orange bale. Lovely bit of bale band there. Mm. It's called Little Esklets, mate. Oh, it's called Little Esklets. And that is a cute name, isn't it? Dude, I don't care how hard you are, or how hard you think you are, when you hear the word Little Esklets, your melt, your, if your heart doesn't, your heart's melting, isn't it? 
Hey, eh? even Mike Tyson in his prime when he was doing his walkout to just that gong, gong. Someone just went up and whispered little esclets in his ear. He just started giggling. <laughs> Look, swallow. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's lovely to see swallows, swifts, house martins all out. Dogs are going rabid. Hunting dogs. But you know, it's a working farm. That's what all this is. The Yorkshire moors is defined by the farmlands and the people who work here. The history of the place. Is it a squealer? I don't know. No. no. Silence. Oh. Silence. The Yorkshire moors treating us. Didn't even have to warm it up. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that echoing throughout the valley. We're here. For anyone who's just new to watching my videos and you think, oh, who's this lad coming along, taking over latches and locks and doing a bit? Well, I'd just like to tell you now that this is one of the original founding members and joint CEO of latches and locks. He was here at the inception of latches and locks. I was. Uh, I, if I remember, I can be bothered. Cue clip. We now are doing latches. There's plenty of content. There's this plenty of content for sh to share. So you lads can have the beer reviews, just leave us our latches. And also it's what it's the ones where they've done like makeshift locks that yeah. you'll find in the middle of a field somewhere. And also to prove how serious I am, if you'd just like to go down below and follow my new Instagram page, latches and locks. If anyone's got any interest in latches or locks, maybe you've made a latch or a lock, or you've got <laughs> photos that you'd like to share of latches and locks, then please do get in touch. There you go, just so you know you're dealing with there you go. The original board meeting. Cer certified, mate. Certified. Medic. Medics and gates. We're back. The Esk Valley Walk. <laughs> I had a little bit of a wobble on my uh, Harriet way, being like, oh, we do too many latches and locks and medics and that, <laughs> but we're back. We're back. <laughs> We're back. It's good so I had a poorly tummy because of eating them gammy prawns, we're, but we're back. And we've joined the Esk Valley Walk this is now, so our uh, off the beaten track bit. We have plotted this route in ourselves, so there's a, another bit that we're going to sort of make up and come off the track, but now we follow the Esk Valley Walk and we're going to try and stay as close to this wonderful river as possible. St. George's mushroom that comes out around St. George's Day. Braddock. It's seen many uh, incarnations over its time. These oh my god. Sanded by human hand. Have you still got your little stress lichen? Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, I do, yeah. What is it? <laughs> it's <lots> of finger. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. Medic! We stopped for a little break to change into our shorts have some trail mix and air out our feet while taking in the rolling green hills of the Estale Valley. A game of cricket was being played in the distance to a soundtrack of birdsong and morale was high. Some more St George's mushrooms. We've taken a couple, I've put both my waters in one side and we've put some mushrooms in the side pouch they'll probably get annihilated and turn into soup but if when we get where we're going they're in half decent nick we're definitely going to cook them up man what's that up there? That's the ultimate medic is it oh it's not well i think i've got some uh, antihistamines in my bag do you reckon it's beyond help or the thing is my medical team has had is a hundred percent success rate and as i've always said no one gets left behind so give it a shout medic <laughs> Done. You'll be all right, sunshine. They're on the way. One of the best wildlife sightings of my life. Walk down here, this tree, just something just floats out of it. Big barn owl. Oh. Down this little cut out here, looked back at us. <laughs> yeah. And then just banked and slowly flew off. Oh, day sighting close up Mid. of Barnabas McAulis. And then he just effortlessly glided through that tree there. I thought he was going to land in it, and then he just sort of glided through. And you can't hear them because the thing about owls is at the, the end of their wings is all circular 
and so they don't cut through there they sort of waft through it so that they can hunt silently at night you don't hear their wings flap that was a sighting man amazing mate that is easily the best barn all sighting I've ever <laughs> best barn all sighting oh what a glorious day this is shaping up to be a beauty isn't it and you can do that All these nettles, mate. It's worth getting stung just for walk back. Ugh, come on. And there she is. Look, the mighty, not so mighty yet, but potential. The river esque. We've got geese. I mean, it's a poor, poor, poor man's owl. I've heard geese being <laughs> referred to as it's a ground owls. <laughs> Large bodied ground owl. <laughs> a flock of long necked ground owls here. <laughs> we got to see the river and we got to see some amazing ground owls, but we've, we've goofed. We have our first we've, gift guy. With our first goof of the trip, because we got, what is going on with this? We had owl brain, didn't we? Yeah. We had fluffy owl brain. We were starstruck, weren't we? What, how did you close this thing? Uh, it's a mission. It's a mission that I'm willing to take on. Oh, here we are. Like an escape room. There we go, we're in, we're done. Ah, oh, yeah, we got fuzzy brain, we fuzzy owl brain, didn't we? Not been a wasted journey because we managed to see the nice yeah, river okay. again. Is it map time? Yeah. Yeah, it's map time. Don't, don't look at us. <laughs> we know where we're going Brand spanking new. Shamford Edge as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Medic. So sometimes on these hikes, I'll have a pint. And sometimes I'll, I won't. And when I say sometimes I won't, I don't think I did on the Cape Raft Trail and that was about it. But this looks nice. Because it was established in 1865 according to my glamorous assistant. But we're giving it up, aren't we? Because it's like it's about half five, and there's another village down the way called Danby. And we know that that's got an alehouse too. So we think we're going to put in the extra miles, get to Danby, then we've really earned our pint, haven't we? Have a pint, have some fodder, and then just think about somewhere to, to pitch up. Have a look on the map. Beautiful Castleton in the distance there. Where we are. Primrose and wood violet. Have a look what they've got going on. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. A pint of Yorkshire legend apiece, and we'll see how we get on, see where this goes. Oh, we, we, and you can't read it yet. Because <laughs> I haven't finished. <laughs> I was reading. We're leaving Danby, we've had one pint, the sun's at our back, and um, we had a business meeting, and we've decided to bat on for the four or five miles to the next village, which is Lelome. Find somewhere around Lelome to pitch our wigwams. Slobbery, aren't you? Slobodon Milosevic. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, man. Hey, boys. Hello. Hello, darling. Hello. 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 Oh. Hello. Yeah. See you, mate. He was cool. You want more? Come on. <laughs> Goodbye. The golden hour. As you can see, sun going down behind us. And we're nearly there, we're nearly in Lilo. Not been doing much waffling to the camera because 
Uh, we finally got to that stage, so when you first start, which is always happens to me, you're giddy, you're into it. Let's go, best time ever. There's owls flying and landing on your head, eating fucking nuts off your face and all that. And you get netted, and you're like, whoo. You need to earn that gauge, and we've done it. And we can see Lelom and the possibilities that Lelom holds. Lollipop, lollipop, oh, lolly, lolly, lolly. Spruce tips. Ooh. Mm. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Nice though. It's like a gooseberry almost. Yeah. They're full of uh, good soup. Unusual, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. Look at us with foraging. Living off the land. Some primroses. Roadside primrose. What else we got while you're on? <laughs> so we've come to, it's come to like, we're just eating from hedgerows now. This is Lelom, our destination. And we can see Lilo and we're still eating plants. Eat that flower. You eat it! <laughs> you eat it! The lads are coming into town for Saturday. Have you got your Ben Sherman shirt in your bag? Yeah. Good lad. Firetrap jeans. Fire jeans. Good lad. I've got some uh, I've got some cool water if you wanna. What's this? A single grave. Burial ground by the Society, Society of Friends. We're all friends. We're all friends, yeah. So here we are, should we go across stepping stones? He said, of course, I reply. <laughs> Get you falling into water. The famous stepping stones of Lealholm. Used to come here, like this was the place that used to come with my granddad. Every single time they came up here, it was Lealholm. Yeah. He always had to come to Lealholm. Because he loves it, and it, I can see why. Right. Yeah, mate. Whoa, because it's mint. Wow, because the river's moving that way, it makes me feel like I'm a bit pissed. Oh, lovely stuff. Absolute joy to walk over. Are you having that, look? Put your way, because it's weird filming as you're going into a pub. But well, here we are, let's go. Uh, yeah, What are you having for breakfast? Fruit and nuts. Fruit and put it together yourself or buy it as a... Put it together myself. Deluxe mate. Deluxe handcrafted... Handcrafted, yeah. Nut mix. After a wacky feed and a couple of pints in the pub, we set off by the light of the moon to find a place to pitch our tents. We chose the corner of this field, pitched late, set off early and left no trace. My tent of choice is the Big Agnes Copper Spur Something something letter letter two and the reason is anyone who watched my last video will know that I got absolutely drenched with condensation and now this is prime condensation it was low lying mist thick grass and nothing now, my sleeping bag was dry I was dry I had my Uber light -like rest mat on my yoga mat with my Neutrino 600 sleeping bag I brought me a pillow this time, which was just my decathlon pillow, and slept very well. Joseph Von Diddle, the classic Coleman. <laughs> it's vintage by now, isn't it? It's a it's a relic, isn't it? Is it still waterproof? Oh, I don't know, mate. No, it's not been tested in a, a proper downpour for a long time. Uh, right. <laughs> I would suspect it's failed. So. You know, we're suspecting it had failed in a downpour. The Coleman Exponent, it's called. And for anyone who's a regular watcher, you won't have seen Joey D camping in anything other than that for the last 10 years. Value for money. Value for money through the roof. It was about 60 quid. Right, it was 60 quid. That was 60 quid, and he's used it for the last 10 years. You At you least. Do the math. At least, yeah, you do the math. We're on about 10p a camp. I was warm enough, I had softies. I went for softies and a very thin summer sleeping bag. It's a wise. I went for versatility rather than having a down sleeping bag. Yeah, it makes sense. What is your synthetic? Yeah. The sleeping bag he had was that, that what was it, 15? Yeah, comfort level of 15. <laughs> comfort level of 15. 
which is like... Uh, it is about 8 or 9 degrees, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Comfort level of 15, which is like the height of British summer. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, when you're testing out your kit, you have to be cold sometimes. You have to... You've got to try it. You've got to like maybe skirt on the edge of being a bit cold, just to know exactly what your kit can do. Yeah and what works for you. Right, we're gonna pack up our shells. We put everything away, we've just got the shells of the tent and it's a beautiful day to be hitting the trail and our plan is to make it to the sea today. I think we've got about 19 miles, so it's a 18, 19 miles, something like that. No trace left, just a little bit of flattened grass. There's the smell from the countless wild garlics permeates the air. We'll head off, try not to burn our necks and our shin bones. We just had maybe two pints. We had a bit of fodder, but I'll tell you something. I got hot dog and chips. Joey D got scampi and chips, and it was... <laughs> it was mad, wasn't it? it was mad. Little tin hot dog. Joey D had a little uh, metal tin with about four scampis in it. <laughs> Loads of chips. No side salad or peas out. It was pretty wacky. But when you're that hungry and you've been hiking all day, any port in a storm, in it, Any king prawn in a wrap. Any crab stick in a, coating. in a coating that looks like a parsnip is good enough for me. wonder what wildlife we're going to see today. Yesterday was splendiferous. It was sex on to Trump yesterday, wasn't it? Yesterday was on one, wasn't it? We had... Uh, the owl sighting, which was up there, we want it best ever. Yeah. We saw a deer that was just stood next to a fence. With no run up at all, it just bounded like five or six foot in air straight over it. Not a really good experience with frogs though, was no, it? It, wasn't it was traumatic, wasn't it? <laughs> it was more, yeah. Fingering through that dead well, fog that's suit. That's wildlife. That's wildlife. You can't just, you can't have the life without the death. You can't, can you? The cosmic soup. It's not friendly, it's not nice, it's not kind, is it, sometimes? No. Sometimes life is brutal. And if you don't believe me, you can ask them frogs left in a little hole to die in their own stew. Yeah. Just with the mates all stew, drowning in their own mates, liquidised mates. Pretty much, yeah. That's the truth. It's a nice, uh, nice track to warm up on, isn't it? First thing. Oh, it's good for morning, we've got legs going. Good morning, good morning to the esk. Lovely to be walking by its side first thing. That's nice, isn't it? The luxury spa. I bet that stinks once you start mucking about in there. <laughs> Leave it. See if she's a squealer. Shall I go for the mechanism? Always go for the mechanism. Oh, it's a painful squealer. Oh, it's a bit, it's a bit stiff as well. Oh no, it's painful. Painful to watch. He's nice, but then... Medic! Maybe he's struggling mentally and he needs to get in cold water therapy, do some oh, Wim Hof. you feel better. You know what Wim Hof said, <laughs> He's a unit. Right, we're going to come past. Don't do anything stupid. Don't go rogue. Don't go rogue. Don't go Joe Rogue. Fair dues. Look at this house, man, in the middle of the woods. 
This is heaven. Oh, little Robin. Robert. Oh, are you alright, mate? Best day ever. Whew, look at that for a house. There's the mill there, look. The old water mill. And look, you've got the river running past you, you've got no neighbours. You've never told to no one else Say goodbye Ready? Smells so nice. There he is, look. Beggar's Bridge is a survivor from a time when horsepower and walking were the main mode of transport. Regarde this old photo. Beggar's Bridge was built in 1619 by a wealthy merchant named Thomas Ferris. According to legend, Ferris was born in nearby Egton, the son of a poor farmer. As a young man, Ferris fell in love with Agnes Richardson, the daughter of a prosperous squire who lived in Glaisdale across the river. When Ferris asked permission to marry Agnes, the squire refused, dismissing him as a beggar. Tom decided to go away to sea to make his fortune. He wanted to say goodbye to Agnes before he left, but a flood made the river impossible to cross. He left Britain for the Caribbean, where he made his fortune. On his return to Yorkshire, he married Agnes before becoming the Sheriff of Hull in 1614. Ferris built a bridge across the River Esk, so that no future lovers would ever be parted as he and his love had been. a glorious section through some of the most beautiful woodland with bluebells and views and rocks and it had everything going on a real nice mix of trees everything's in flower everything's coming into like getting ready for the start of summer and it's beautiful and we couldn't have asked for a better day i'm gonna say hello to this guy jump bike he's struggling look yeah right. now mate you all right yeah. yeah good lad good lad uh we couldn't have asked for a better day for it, but it's forecast for lightning later today. So we're, we're hoping to get to Whitby before the lightning strikes. Ninja horse. Hey, we're back on the Esk. Just had a lovely stop there. The bottom horseshoe. There's two. Yeah, there's two for a Scotch egg and a cake and a couple of coffees double dropped and we're back on these bad boys look at that extreme sports those of you know know what do they know about rope swings and me what that you love them well, scotland too oh yeah <laughs> Fall off this, you won! This is science, mate! Oh. Three, two, one, science! <laughs> no! <laughs> the rope. The rope swings. <laughs> Decent swing, that. Right, are we gonna try and get in this river all wet? This is it. We're going in for our second dip. In the mighty River S. Oh! <laughs> God, it's fresh. Well, there we go. Eskimo. Second dip in Eskimo. 
Oh, just an invigorating little cold dip there. I feel absolutely brand new. And that sun, after being in cold, it just feels amazing. <laughs> We've stopped for a little snack. We're gonna cook up our St. George's mushrooms. A beautiful mushroom. Make sure to cross-reference and double-check all mushrooms before eating them. This one does have a poisonous look-alike, which is the deadly fibre cap. And it appears at the end of spring, early summer, and can look similar, but it stains bright red and its cap is covered in fine fibres. Absolutely beautiful smell. Oh, so we've got our mushrooms, and I've just picked some wild garlic flour to go in at the end. We've just got a little pot, so we'll bang them in there and just stew them in their own juices. I mean, the Soto Windmaster, she can lose, use quite a low heat on it. Stay there, don't fall over. The spider curse, so we'll just tidy them up. Taking off any of the grit, mud, insects, whatever. And there you go, look at that specimen, man. That is beautiful. A nice low heat. Right, we're done. St. George's mushroom and wild garlic flour. And considering there's no salt, there's no seasonings whatsoever, it's just foraged goods. Mm. The flavour is great. Mm. Right, that's as animated as you're going to get off Joy D, but that, trust really me, nice. is him being ecstatic. Wonderful, like, clear, almost like a consomme of just pure... Essence of shroom, the little hits of wild garlic. <laughs> Pass it like a zoot. And what a wonderful trail snack. Re genuinely is really tasty, isn't it? Yeah, really tasty. Clean, like you say. Mm. No salt. Right, we're going to finish these off and then mosey on downhill. We're just coming through slights now. We're heading from slights to Whitby. I'm looking forward to seeing where this brings us out and I'm tying it all together in my mind map. Film it just in case it's the last thing you ever see. The final gate before I get gorged. Now it's fresh. But it is special because it's the last one. Come on then, where is it? That's a telltale sign. What is it? Medic. <laughs> Why is it a teddy? Medic. Nice view of Whitby Abbey there. distance that's where we're heading to fairy door we're just coming into rus up now and this is the old we used to call it the mart and me uh, when I was a youth my granddad used to bring me here on like a Sunday for markets to see animals and he just put me in with pigs and that. I used to just shit myself and he just like leave me in with pigs. That's maybe why my noodles are a bit scrambled. <laughs> just in with pigs, trauma. Up no. here is the weir. This is where the tidal water ends at this weir. This is all tidal water. You get seals coming up right up here. And I've seen some in these fields down here, which looks bizarre out of context. Joe's home village of Ruzza, yeah. where he was born, born, and bred. born and bred and raised and all that. La Poole Viaduct, also known as the Esk Valley Viaduct, is a 13 arch brick viaduct built to carry the Scarborough and Whitby Railway over the River Esk. Due to its situation close to the sea, the design avoided the use of iron, using brick and cement construction, which began in October 1882 and was completed two years later. The viaduct is mentioned in Bram Stoker's 1897 novel, Dracula. The little river, the Esk, runs through a deep valley, which broadens out as it comes nearer the harbour. A great viaduct runs across, with high piers through which the view seems somehow further away than it really is. Coming into Whitby, the Abbey in the distance, the new bridge, the train, <laughs> it's all going on. Civilization.
naturally formed by the estuary of the River Esk, Whitby Harbour was the main source of income for the residents of Whitby for centuries, from traditional fishing to whaling, shipbuilding and alum export. Originally known as the only viable road into town, Whitby Harbour was used as early as the 1300s by merchants from Northern Europe to trade goods with the wealthy Abbey. The wine was by far the most common import into the harbour, while salt herring was the most common export. Contrary to most people's instincts, the piers lie to the east and west of the harbour mouth, which actually faces due north. Whitby is one of the only places in the UK where you can watch the sun set and rise in the sea on the same day during summer. And it's where we grew up. It's our hometown and it's the perfect end to the perfect trip. We did it. As Joe was saying earlier, it's mad to think that those little esklets and that waterfall that we bathed in become this and spill out into the glorious North Sea. Final thoughts, highlights. We're a bit knackered. We'll say that. We just had fish and chips. It was delightful. I just enjoyed the whole walk, I'll be honest, man. Yeah. The terrain was really varied. Never, never felt like monotonous at any point. Or loads of wildlife. Owl. Dolphins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've just seen some dolphins. We've got seen an owl. Owl was a, obviously a, a womble. A deer. <laughs> seen all sorts of gear. Just shy of 30 mile. You know, so a really good two day hike. Let's get your feet dunked in. Very least we can do for you. Hey, oh. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'll be hand. There we go, look ya. Yeah. From source to mouth, the, ch the champions of the esk. Oh, that's cold. It's nippy, isn't it? <laughs> it's quite cold on shin bones. It's cold at source, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. There we go, look. We've done it! We've made it! Whoa! Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That's colder. Colder than the sauce, he says. <laughs> Woo! Alright, what a trip. We've ticked it off. We've managed to do it. Finally, after all this talking, we've managed to smash it out the park. And here we are, stood in the North Sea. If you followed us along, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. I send you now, but love. He says, see you later. See <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. See.